guys. In this video, I'm going to give us a uh, kind of basic rundown of the mode of action for um, RU58841, Mirror State, the pro drug. Um, I noticed there's a lot of debate um, and questions about what's really going on here. Um, and at first glance, there are a lot of ways in which this research paper here, um, RU58841, Mirror State, pro drug development from topical treatment of acne and androgenetic alopecia. There's a lot of ways at which, at first sight, it can be very misunderstood because it is a complex research paper. So I want to go through what's really going on here with you guys so you can begin to understand this on a cellular level. Um, so we're actually going to look at some of the chemistry, how things are uh, reacting with one another so you can really get this engraved in your mind of why there's such great hype over rum. Um, so, of course, this isn't all just completely made up off the top of my head. This is all coming from a research paper which has discussed the benefits of um, RU5841 in mirror state. Basically, guys, all we're doing here is taking RU5841 and adding a lipid tail. And that turns this complex into a prodrug. Now, there's been debates on, you know, um, the solid lipid nanoparticles. The solid lipid nanoparticles are not the prodrug. That was just the vehicle through which they used to investigate rum as a prodrug. Notice in the title, it says nothing about SLN. It is RU58841 Miristate prodrug. So this is the prodrug, and they use solid lipid nanoparticles in order uh, as their vehicle. Um, so let's keep that straight and then begin our investigation and let's come back and talk about that at the end again. So something I wanted to talk to you about, I've been preaching about the need for RU58841 to be more lipophilic in order to more readily enter a cell. And there's been some big disconnect there um, about what that entails. So I wanted to go ahead and really break this down so you can visually understand this. This may be real basic for some of you. But, um, you know, for others it may help, you know, see what's going on and say, oh, wow, that really begins to make sense now. So, as I was saying, you know, there's been some debate on the forums where it straight up says in the paper that rum is not an effective anti-androgen. It is not an effective anti-androgen. Rum does not block the androgen receptor. It says right here uh, at the beginning in the abstract. Um, we present a new anti-androgen prodrug, RU5881 Miristate, uh, for topical therapy. Almost devoid of affinity for the androgen receptor. Uh, so it's completely devoid of affinity for the androgen receptor. With that said, people uh, see that and they think, well wait, they just said it doesn't work. No, that's not what that meant. That's just confirming that indeed rum is a prodrug. In its current state, it is not... Uh, does ha it has no affinity for the androgen receptor in its current state. But that's not what happens when it goes inside the cell. So let's look at this. You know that a cell is composed of a phospholipid bilayer. Phospholipid bilayer. So, isn't it uh, beneficial, well this is just a well-known fact, you can find it anywhere, just Google it, that more lipophilic drugs have a higher probability of entering a cell. So this is the outside of the cell, here is the inside of the cell, and here we have some, uh, I have represented the androgen receptors, this piece of paper here. And down here, you can't see it as well in this video, I don't think, but I represent the nucleus of the cell here. So we got the, uh, the phospholipid bilayer, androgen receptors, and nucleus, and we have RUM, RU5841 mirror state. Now I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly because no one has pronounced it before, I've never seen a video of this, so let's just go by that for now and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so this is RU5841 mirror state. You can already see that <coughs> you have two portions of this. Through esterification, this is an ester group, they have added a lipid tail onto RU5841, which is a potent antiandrogen. So because of this, this lipid tail gives it the ability to be more readily uptaken by the cell. You see the similarities because it's lipid, lipid. You know, light goes into light. So this is simply a prodrug that helps it enter the cell. Um, and I hope that everyone can, can get to that point. Um, so lipophilicity or felicity is crucial in getting drugs into a cell that's surrounded by lipids. Um, so with that said, what happens is, this is another point of confusion, because it's a prodrug, it is pulling it into the cell, it gives it a better method to cross a phospholipid bilayer because it's more uh, lipid-like. And once into the cell, 
This lipid tail is cleaved. There are special enzymes that do that inside the cell. They cleave esters. Uh, thus, you're left with a potent antiandrogen that was delivered to the cell in a greater amount than it would have had it not had the lipid tail. You see that? So now, uh, with that said, the RD5841 can go act as, as we already know it will, where it will bind with the androgen receptor. Um, and then um, this promotes a blocking of the androgen receptor, whereas if it were dihydrotestosterone, it would go into the nucleus and transcribe the gene, which in our case leads to male pattern baldness. So you can see how we have effectively um, delivered RD5841 to the androgen receptor through use of a prodrug. This is the whole point of a prodrug, is that it, if it were in this form inside the cell, this has no anti-androgen potential. This will not bind with the androgen receptor. It is the prodrug that breaks through ester cleavage into the, the active form and it can bind with the androgen receptor. So I hope this has shown how, disregarding SLN, um, which I can talk about, that's just the vehicle, that having a more lipophilic version is beneficial for uptake into cells. So now that we understand that, the other thing is SLN, which was a solid lipid nanoparticle, was the vehicle that they used. Um, that doesn't mean it's the only way it will work. We know that it will work, you know, because it's standard RU plus the addition of a lipophilic chain. You know, there's still science here, but everything, every indication uh, of any drug out there shows that more lipophilic versions are more readily uptaken by cells because cells are composed of a phospholipid bilayer. Um, so with that said, the other benefit of rum, not only does it perox membranes uh, more readily, but because it has the lipid tail, you have a much broader range of vehicles that you can put it in. You can put it in lipophilic vehicles such as solid lipid nanoparticles. Um, now the solid lipid nanoparticle, for you to visualize this, is as it sounds. It's a solid lipid nanoparticle versus uh, like a cell membrane is, we think of as a fluid mosaic model where there's a lot of movement, there's a lot of cholesterol in there that keeps, keeps this moving. Well, when you have rum in a solid lipid nanoparticle, it is bound in, I want to say, pleated sheets of uh, the solid lipid nanoparticle. So imagine this giant, in the, uh, the intercellular space, the space between cells, this giant particle, relatively speaking, comes in and has lots of this rum inside of it. That lipid particle will slowly begin to deposit the rum, and then the rum will go into the cell. So disregarding that SLN, you can still see that this is what will be active at, at moving RU through the membrane. So the SNL, while they used it as their representation of a vehicle, we could use any vehicle. It's the rum, it's the pro-drug that really matters. That's what I want to drive home to everyone, and hopefully this visualization has helped do that. So give me your comments. Um, I'm hoping this has at least cleared it up a little bit. Um, but you know, this is still science, guys. We do not know for sure, but the, the report time and time again indicates that this is the mode of action and this is how it's working. Uh, and you know, the paper ends very positively saying that this definitely shows great potential because it is a program. So, um, you know, take it for what it is, but I definitely think that this helps illustrate how RUM would work. Thank you, guys.